Hey everybody, Money Monday, Chris is high on coffee. Uh, and <laughs> Thank you, full steam. <laughs> yeah, thanks Tyson. Jay, Chris does say I do forever. Coming at you for Money Monday. And Money Monday. the topic we're going to talk about is what's ours is mine and what's mine is mine. Wait, what? Exactly. <laughs> Did you just say that means, exactly. every, that means all the money is yours? Exactly. Our money is yours and uh, well, your money is yours? Back when I was making good money. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Explain to them what we're going so, to talk about. What we thought about is how difficult money is in relationships, especially if maybe you have lived apart for so many years and you've had your own separate money. And we thought we'd go through some scenarios that we may or may not have lived through and kind of do a real time discussion yeah. about how we felt about it or what we did about it. And it's kind of raw. We or haven't, how bitter we were. <laughs> we haven't fully discussed this. So this is happening to you pretty much live, real time discussion yeah. about maybe some stuff in our past, some stuff maybe you're going through. Um, if you are in one of these scenarios, let us know in the comments and how you're feeling about it or what you did to solve it or what you're doing wrong about it. You know, we'd love to have a real time discussion with you as well. So we're going to just kind of discuss four different scenarios. So four different scenarios that many couples are in. So our first scenario Probably is... Probably including how we were. Actually, we've been in many of these scenarios because we've been married so long because we're so old. Yeah. <laughs> so we've lived through some of these scenarios. So we thought we would discuss kind of how we felt. So yeah. our number one scenario is one spouse works and the other doesn't. So kind of like the wife is staying home with the kids or even nowadays a lot of uh, husbands stay home with the kids. So whatever scenario that is, one of you is out there making the bulk of the money and the other right. person is not working or staying home. And that could also be like somebody's disabled or something like that. So we wanted to talk about how you deal with that, how you should deal with it. What are some of the emotions attached to that? Since we were there, do you want to start it off with? Yeah. As far as when you were a homemaker for the first 18 years, 17 years, yeah. um, while I was working, and how you felt, and then I'll explain to you how I felt. Yeah. So how... This should be good. Well, here's the thing. We got married very young, and almost right away had kids, and almost right away, shortly after we were married, um, I stopped working and stayed home with the kids. Right. So this was a good portion of our lives, and we did it well. I mean, here's the thing. Um, I paid the bills as far as, like, did the writing out the checks and kind of trying to figure that out, and Jay brought home the money, and he was making good money for a little 18, 19, then 20, 21, you know, all those years. Um, he was making good money. Yep. Um, so we never spoke it out loud that... It was just your money. Right. Or, and we just worked together pretty good. However, I'm going to say, looking back, there were feelings of mine, and maybe some people can relate out there, that, well, you were working hard and making the money. I kind of sometimes felt like I couldn't really fully make the decisions for the money on the big decisions. Or I would just lean towards whatever you would want because I felt like, well, he's out there working really hard for that money. The funny part about that whole thing is <clears throat> in our early years, you know, 18, 19, 20, to 30. 17 years, yeah. Yeah, to 30 or whatever. Um, well, late 30s. Yeah, actually. Anyway, um, she felt like she had to give in to what I wanted to do, but on that same point is when she was trying to do a budget, and this was before even Dave Ramsey was in the equation, what we did as a couple, mm -hmm. 
I always felt like, and you know, even until 10 years ago or whenever we started doing Dave Ramsey, like she was trying to steal the, the part of way of, of me having fun or getting to enjoy doing things. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you're saying you felt like I was controlling the money. Um, even though, well, yeah, because you were doing a budget because you're good at that. Like we, like we said in the past on Money Mondays, mm -hmm. you know, one spouse is really, really great at budgeting. The other one probably is not. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a freak of nature relationship <laughs> where both of you are good at budgeting. Yeah. And then I don't know how that works out. But anyway, for us, mm -hmm. she's very, very good at budgeting. So if she was trying to put money in savings, I felt in my 20s, I don't feel this way anymore mm -hmm. because we're older now and... I'm more mature. It felt like she was trying to take away the fun. I would work hard at work and then she would budget it and put all this money in savings. Well, I didn't want all of that, what she was putting in savings to go in savings because I wanted some of it mm -hmm. to go spend to maybe do projects around the house where we used to live or <clears throat> take the boys snowboarding or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and that's what caused the rifts in our twenties, I think. Yeah, and it's kind of... Do you of, see that? Yeah, and it's kind of... It was pre... It was before we knew Dave Ramsey. Right. And before he gave us right. kind of the warrant to have the two different personality types Correct. and be able to build that in. Correct. So it's kind of funny that you were feeling that I was kind of controlling the money and putting... We didn't put a lot in savings. We were we were a young family to do <laughs> well, we didn't have a lot to put in savings, but she was trying to put as much as she could into savings mm -hmm. because she was trying to better our future. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like I was sabotaging that because I didn't want to do that because I was working my butt off and I was working hard and I was making all the money. Mm -hmm. Even though she was working hard at home and she was taking care of our kids. And picking yeah. them up from school and taking them to school and making sure, you know, they were taken care of actually very, very well. And if our kids ever watch this, I'm sure they'll agree that she's a great mom. But I always felt like anything we put in savings, uh, that it was going to take away from the fun. Because I'm an mm -hmm. otter. She's a beaver. She likes to, you know, build her dam and get money stocked up. And I like to have fun, woo, spend the money. So, I mean, and that caused rifts early on. Well, and it's funny because, and that's why we're having this real-time discussion, and you guys are just basically watching our marriage yucky. Shlooey. Yeah. We're just blue everywhere. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because maybe this can help you guys if you're having some of these same issues. Um, but it's funny that you were thinking that I was controlling it when I felt like because you were making the money, I was giving into a lot of the things you were wanting to do and wasting money. Right. And I was giving into that thinking, well, he's working really hard. And so I feel like we didn't make good choices because I always felt like, well, it's not really my money, which later on I did become stronger in that. We did it this for 17 years. Right. So there are times when I stood up and said, hey, we need to have a future. Yep. But there is a case where, you know, here you are as a teen. You, and I loved my years staying home. I wouldn't trade it for the world. So I'm really grateful. It gave me time with my children. It gave me time to work, you know, volunteer in their classrooms, to make good meals. It helped yeah. us. It, we saved a lot of money. Yeah. But it wasn't yeah, it was until good. maybe halfway through that journey of being a homemaker that I realized my worth in being a homemaker because huh. I, it was something I read or something about how much it would cost to have a, a housekeeper, how much it would cost oh, to for have all of the different things, you know, to go out to eat all the time because I was making like a lot of home cooked meals that were cheap. It was so good though. Yeah. Oh my Lord. It was so how good. How much it would cost for daycare. So good. How much it would cost for, right. so it was like, um, about halfway through my experience as a homemaker, I finally realized my worth in actually being home. Mm -hmm. And that, and the one thing that wasn't really either, 
it was easy for us to combine our money and it was easy for us always to be like we're married and this is our this is the the pot you right. know together right right the money pot so we've never really it's just behind the scenes there's the guilt <clears throat> or like on your case the frustration right right yeah you're taking my fun away yeah so now here's the weird part this has flipped on its end because Jay worked hard for all those years while I was a homemaker, 17 years. Mm -hmm. And I was a stay at home mom and wasn't bringing anything in, just trying to save us some money and had some of those guilt filled feelings. Now I am actually bringing in the money. And even though you have savings and all of that, you've taken time off for your health. Right. So tell us about that, like, because now we've kind of flipped it and I have no problem with all of our money being in one pot and I don't consider it my money right. that's in this pot. And I also feel like I get to pay back for all the years that you were doing the heavy lifting in the finances. So how does okay. this, how's this new scenario so what's interesting is with me being home for, I've been home for, I think, six months now. It hasn't been very long actually at all. And I'm not collecting any unemployment. I'm not getting any disability. I'm not getting, I'm not getting anything. And uh, the only thing I've made any money on is selling car parts off of my son's old mm -hmm. 350Z that he got rear-ended in. Mm -hmm. So that's helped us a little bit, but nothing, nothing to amount to anything. But now that I'm at the point that I'm at, I'm ready to go back to work. I've gained my weight back. The stress from my old job is gone and I'm ready to start a new chapter, um, you know, in my life working somewhere else with a lot less stress. Um, but feeling like I'm not contributing is a huge factor. Um, you know, Krista is carrying the bulk of the financial burden right now <clears throat> because we don't want to touch the savings account accounts. We want to leave that where it's at because that's where it belongs. Um, now that I'm older, I see why we have the money in savings and why it's a good uh, thing to have savings. Um, especially after taking the Dave Ramsey class and teaching Dave Ramsey financial peace class. Um, uh, any guy can tell you that they place a lot of self-worth mm -hmm. on their job, on the money they bring home. Not totally being the breadwinner, but at least at least contributing, you know, um, it's, it's like all eyes are on you. It's like, what are you doing to, um, pitch in help? You know, what am I doing to bring the money in? You know, what am I doing? You know, um, I've gotten a majority of our projects done. Um, I'm ready to go back to work as soon as we get my mom moved here after her house sells. Um, we'll get her moved here. And then as soon as she's nice and warm and settled in her home, um, then I'll go apply and I'll find a job. And then I will feel better about myself um, because... Um, this is my personal opinion, but a man's self-esteem is based on what he's contributing to the marriage, um, to his wife, um, basically taking care of, of the bills or helping take care of the bills. It's huge. And it may not be huge to every man out there, but to me, it's huge. And right now, I don't feel my self-worth is there. I feel that it's down here. Um, that's that's hard because for 
30 two and a half of the 33 years married or something like that. You've been the breadwinner and you've worked hard. And even in your hiatus, when you have been really ill and needed to um, rest, instead, every day you wake up and you do projects and you try to make sure that you're working, working, working. So it's funny that our self-perception of ourselves, you know, um, I don't look at you like you're not working or contributing. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, hey, on that's well, good to know. while we're talking to the audience out here, there's probably some people watching that the husband is the, it just worked out where the wife had a corporate job or something that was paying better. And it made sense for them to have him stay home and do Mr. House, Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom. Right. So do you, because even as, as a homemaker myself, as a woman, I enjoyed it, but there was this kind of little bit of a guilt. And I think that that is society that puts that on us. But do you think it's even harder for a man to be a Mr. Mom? Maybe you guys are out there and you I, know. I think so. I, I think it'd be incredibly difficult. Um, I guess when uh, a guy is being a stay-at-home dad, I guess the, uh, what is it called? Verif um, what is the word? Not verify or verification. The, um, basically to make, to make the man feel like he's actually accomplishing something. I guess if he had little kids at home. Sense of worth his well worth, because you're his, taking care of kids right but see i'm not so that's where i'm kind of getting kind of antsy to get back to work so i feel like i'm helping us because me being mm -hmm. off is not helping the situation at all i mean it's not hurting it i mean i'm getting a lot healthier now i'm eating better i'm eating right Mm -hmm. uh, I'm eating a lot more. My weight is back up to where it needs to be. Sleeping the appropriate but, hours. Yeah. And the sleep too. But what I'm saying is, as far as a guy that's a Mr. Mom and his wife is working, I think he has, he, it's easier for him to justify what he's doing mm -hmm. when he has kids to take care of. If he's like me, it's a hard pill to swallow because of a man's pride. Mm -hmm. You know, I think men in general are very proud as far as look at my accomplishments, look at what I've done, look at where I've worked, look at all the things that I have mm -hmm. done or the amount of money that I've made in my lifetime um, at previous jobs, you know, and, and, you know, what I managed, you know, I was a manager at uh, one job for 15 years. Then I was a, uh, warehouse manager for nine years. I mean, it, it almost is a representation of, of you as a person, as a guy. <clears throat> and I think that the husbands that stay at home, I, my hat is off to you because, um, that's pretty neat that you're willing to do that for your children mm -hmm. and let your wife be out you know, in the workforce and you're raising your kids. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me being that we're married and we are empty nesters, mm -hmm. I feel, you feel like you didn't have I feel as much of time, a purpose. Well, I don't feel like half a purpose now. I did. Mm -hmm. I did when I was doing the projects because my purpose was get Krista's sewing studio, mm -hmm. uh, built and done accomplished. Um, our shed built and done accomplished our, uh, storage room built, done, accomplished and get, uh, the stupid, um, 350 Z that needs to get out of here sold. And then that will be accomplished. Okay. And so, now that your purposes <clears throat> are kind of wrapping coming up. To wrapping up, right. then you feel like, yeah. And isn't that weird that society 
put so much strain on what we do is our purpose. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the way you're raised too. Mm -hmm. If you have parents that push you to do your very best, and then when you fall below the bar, mm -hmm. then you feel like not only did you let your spouse down, but then you feel like you let your uh, your parents down. Uh -huh. That's, if that even makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I know I, as a homemaker, I struggled for years to feel in a world where all of my friends went to work. You right. know, I struggled to right. have, I felt like I had to defend myself for right. being at home. And that's not how it should be. Whether right. you're a Mr. Mom, whether you're a stay at home, stay -at -home mom. mom, or whether you're on a hiatus and just need a, a little bit of a break. It's different than just being lazy. Right. You know, but I'm just saying when you <clears throat> when you have your parents that have always taught you to work hard mm -hmm. and you will be rewarded for your hard work, mm -hmm. um, no matter what you do, give it your all, um, you know, and then you take a hiatus, you feel like this guilt. Oh, my God, I'm taking this hiatus. The the guilt is just so heavy on your shoulders then you start to go back to not being able to mm -hmm. sleep and health problems. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like you back it up mm -hmm. instead of going forward, <clears throat> which I love my mom and my dad for that. They both pushed me very hard to be my best mm -hmm. and to work hard always in whatever mm -hmm. job I have. And you have always done that. Always been a hard worker. Well, thank you for that. Yes. Always hard worker. So well, you have two. I mean, mm -hmm. raising two and then... Uh, we adopted a boy when he was 10 and, uh, you know, then there was three. So, um, but she was always a great mom. She always has been a great mom. She is a great yeah. mom. So, so, and, and the one thing is, is I don't think we ever felt like my money's mine, your money's yours, you know? Um, right. But it's funny that even though as a married couple, we were okay with, all one pot of money and all of that, you can still quietly have those guilt feelings that you haven't even communicated to your spouse. Right. Yeah. Right. So, okay, let's go with scenario number two, which is one spouse, both spouses are working, or did we just talk about this now? No, we did one. Now we're going to do two. <laughs> <laughs> both spouses are working and one is making a lot more than the other one. So, you know, one got a really good corporate job or something, you know, really high paying. And that's not necessarily the woman or the man because nowadays it could be either it could or. be either way. Either or. But how do you guys figure out who um, controls the money? Do you feel like that person uh, can that makes more money gets to make more decisions or are you pretty fair with that? Uh, and bring it all into one pot. I think I think if the one that makes the most money is really prideful, they need to eat a piece of humble pie and let the other spouse be in a joint decision making agreement when they make decisions about mm -hmm. not only I think not only big, big decisions, but anything that's of importance, you know, and that probably is going to come down to pretty much everything. You know what I was thinking of? Aside from like groceries. Because you're on, you're on the same team. Right. And that's what marriage is. It's joining a team and whether right. you are the first baseman or the outfielder, you're both really important to winning the game. You're working towards the same goal. Yeah. So right. one might have a more prominent role and the other one might just be catching fly balls, but you know, yeah. that's going to actually win the game too. But they got to throw it in. They got to relay it. Yeah. It, it's Look a at relay. me all talking all baseball. Can't believe this. <laughs> this is like exciting. <laughs> But so that's, so that's what it is. It's like you, if right. you are married, once you say I do, you have now joined a team and 
each role that you play, whether like we said in the scenario one, that role is to make sure that you're making home cooked meals and keeping everybody fed and on to bed on time and making sure that you don't have to pay for childcare or yep. whether or not you're going to a small job that maybe gives you some insurance or gives a small job that maybe the first person's job is paying all the main bills, but maybe your job comes in and it gives you a little extra saving money or spending money or something. So you're both yeah. going for the same goals and together. It, it reminds me of that famous saying, I'm sure you guys have all heard it, where there's no letter I, there's no I in team. Yeah. There's no I in team. It's it not group? about you. It's not about me. It's not about her. It's about mm -hmm. us working together towards a common goal. Mm -hmm. And that's fact. Mm -hmm. I mean, we would really have a stressful, very high tension marriage if we weren't on the same page uh, financially, spiritually, mentally, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it would really be ugly, but we chose to work as a team. Yeah. So if you're married and the two of you guys have two separate jobs and one makes more than the other, um, number one, how do, how do you relate to that? Do you have guilt if you're the one not making as much or do you feel like a lot of power if you're the one making the most? And how can you become a better team? How can you have better conversations and communicate together and figure out a scenario realizing, humble yourself and realize that you're both, it's not like, um, I'm going somewhere and you're not. It's <laughs> yeah, that's a famous saying. And I won't go down the road on who said that it wasn't us. Mm -hmm. It was, it was someone that I knew a long time ago when I was little. Someone related to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So anyway. anyway, but yeah, it's important that if you are climbing that mountain, your family's climbing it with you. Yeah. And if you're at work making all the money, they're probably at home making it possible for you to go to work. Yep. They're putting the meals on the table. They are watching the kids. They are doing, so work together and see that you're both valuable. Yeah. So let's go with scenario number three. Um, one spouse has a lot of debt while the other was debt free. So this is like. <laughs> no, that would be a funny. Like one. you get married. Mm -hmm. So. Especially if you didn't talk about it before. Oh. I mean, <laughs> can you guys just imagine if you are the guy and you married your wife or girlfriend and then now you're married and she's your wife and she springs it on you that she has $100,000 worth of debt in student loans. How would that make you feel? So you have 250,000 in savings and you're debt free. You don't use any credit cards. You have just your debit and just cash. And she comes into the marriage and you're head over <laughs> heels about her and you love her to pieces. And all of a sudden she springs that on you that she has $100,000 worth of debt. <laughs> I love debt. Now, obviously you can do one or two things. You can say, well, we need to get this in old. Or... <laughs> <laughs> or you can work together as a team mm -hmm. because there's no I in team. And, and we are going to conquer this debt. And this is our plan of action of how we're going to do that. And that's exactly what should happen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I firmly believe that. You're going to go out and get a pizza job. <laughs> that's right. You do whatever it takes. Just like Ramsey says, you do whatever it you takes. You sell some stuff. Yep. <laughs> yep. Go in that closet and find out what was all bought that needs to be sold. Yeah. All of her Louis Vuitton stuff, <laughs> out of here. <laughs> That'll pay that $100,000 real fast. His motorcycle, out of here. That's right. <laughs> it goes both ways, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so. I was talking about her having the student loans. I know, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna defend the girl who, the, the guy has all the debt. Bottom line, they both need to work together. I mean, even if they come up with a game plan, and they probably should do goal setting, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, figure out how much their total income together um, 
because it's it is the one has a lot of debt, but they're both working. So with both of them, the husband and wife now. One has a lot of debt, one do. doesn't. I do, now you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. He says, I do, and then he says, oh, crap. <laughs> but needless to say, if they both have good jobs, the husband and wife, uh, they could probably pay that 100000 off really mm -hmm. fast if they work together as a team to do so, it. So we, we believe that we have another video about whether you should put your checking accounts together. And, you know, there's some different scenarios and stuff, but let's just say you've put all your money together. This is how I would do it is this is um, the Krista version. This is the Krista version. Let's hear it. And I would say if we're both working and okay, if the debt's mine, but I'm also smart about money, so I don't know how the debt's mine, but, <laughs> but we're going to say, just, let's just say the debt is mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say the debt is mine. So you've got the job that can afford to pay all the basic bills. And then I've got the lower income job, say that- And the debt. And the debt. I've got the job and the debt. Because <laughs> obviously I've got- Because you went to college for that lower income job. <laughs> and that's why I have the debt. It's student loans, come on. <laughs> so what you could do is oh my put it all together, <clears throat> make a budget where his income or hers, whatever you want to do, is completely pays for the bills and then hers is completely extra. So that entire check goes to hitting those and do a debt snowball. Look it up mm -hmm. on uh, Facebook or not on Facebook. Not on Facebook. On uh, YouTube. YouTube or on the yep. web, Dave Ramsey's Financial, Financial Peace, Peace University. University. Yep. Look it up. You can yep. see the debt snowball. We actually do a little thing on it uh, for a video. Maybe we'll put it in the description. Yep. But then do the debt snowball and then that person, you guys work together. Say, okay, I'm going to take my account. I'm going to do this or however you do that. Sit down with a game plan and say, how are we going to conquer this? If you sit down together, you're going to accomplish great things. If you just keep your money divided and if you keep your bills and all your stuff separate, mm -hmm. you're not going to be great together. At, at going at it together. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we do everything together. as a couple. Exactly. exactly. And the first step you can do is take that credit card and... Yeah. <laughs> take that credit card and send get rid of it. Send me your address. I'll even provide the scissors. <laughs> She'll send you a pair of scissors <laughs> with a bow on them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe me? I'll do it. <laughs> okay, let's go with our, our last scenario, which is number four. Um... One spouse is good with money and the other is not. How are you going to deal with that? And what are the emotions involved in that? So. We kind of talked about that in the first one. Yeah, too. but we haven't talked about this. Uh -oh. So at the beginning of our, at the beginning of our marriage, when we were 19. Um, I don't know what he's going to say, which I'm sitting on me. <laughs> at the beginning of our marriage, when we were 19, I barely knew how to balance a checkbook and uh krista always has been good at anything like that so early on we went back and forth i did the checkbook first and then she would take over the bills and then she'd pay the bills and then she'd be really, like frustrated so then i'd take them back over and then i'd pay the bills this went on through all of our 20s into our <laughs> 30s and then finally into our mid 30s late or, no, early 40s, mid 30s. Then Krista finally, she dealt with all of it. She is a financial whiz. She knows exactly <laughs> what to do and how to do things financially. Me, not so much. But <clears throat> when I was working and bringing home good money, we were able to take care of the business. Take care of business. Just make sure everything's taken care of, done. She was... This financial one, she's a saver, not a spender, so it makes it easier for her to come up with a budget and a game plan uh, that is very successful. Don't put the person in charge of the budget that's a spender. <laughs> yeah, the person that likes to have fun, <laughs> don't person. give them the checkbook and money or debit card or any of that. That's my don't advice. Don't do it. 
my little bit of advice. And that's, <laughs> and that's me backing it up, you know? Um, I'm backing her 150%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... And then, I'm just saying, if the person is that's good with money, they can't try to control it. I learned that. Yeah, this isn't a dictatorship. Yeah. You know, this isn't communism. This is like, you know, you work together. It's a democracy. And even yeah. if you... I learned that especially from you Dave. You have to compromise. I especially learned that from Dave Ramsey um, because he, you know, I just figured that the entire only way to do this is we pay all the bills on time and we save money. And, you know, I had certain ways and anything else was the wrong way. But even Dave Ramsey opened me up to seeing that there is another side to money that it's a tool to help you enjoy your life right? as well as save and be safe. Right. He flipped it, the direction yeah. that you do it. So even if you're the one who is good with money, you have to have a good balance. And that's what it is. It's balance. Right. And I think that what we're getting at is that no matter what season of life you're in, no matter what your personalities are, your money languages that it is a struggle for couples and that's probably why it's the number one fight. Um, but don't be afraid to wrestle through that and communicate through that because through the years we did this back and forth and back like, well, you do the money. Well, you do the money. Well, I can, you know, and it's just this battle right? where now we've battled it long enough back and forth to where we've got that balance. Right. It is a balancing act. You you've got to get it, you've got to get it dialed in, or you will struggle as a couple. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you will struggle as a couple if you don't get it figured out and yeah. balanced. Balanced yeah. is a great word to use because it is balancing. It's a balancing act. You're juggling all these different things in the air. Your entire marriage, you're juggling, 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 and you have to keep them going because if you stop with one, it's all <laughs> going to come crashing down. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely learning that balance. Yep. And then <clears throat> uh, we also, in this video, want to share with you that even when you're doing it right and getting that balance, there's some natural feelings or some feelings that shouldn't be there, but society has put them on us. There's guilt, there's frustration, and you're not alone. And I think that right. that's important. Well, and, and that they know. Yeah, and you saw that by us being transparent on this video um, of how I felt mm -hmm. uh, through the last 33 years, 35 years together, 33 married, and how she felt for the last 35 years together, 33 married. Um, I mean, even, even when we were dating, we compromised. So, you know, I, I think when we started dating at 17, I, I think we were in a good place. Uh, we it's had all a, downhill from there. We had a. <laughs> Sorry, you left that just open for me. <laughs> you left <laughs> that open for me. <laughs> I feel that we had a lot in common in the early years of yeah. our relationship when we met at seventeen, and even till now, you know, we we have the same uh, hopes and dreams and desires. Um, and uh, maybe that is why, you know, it's helped us. You know, we, we our belief system is the same. Um, we love the Lord very much. And, um, you know, we put him first in our marriage. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of secular people out there that are like, well, that's not how we do things. Well, that's, that's, that's your deal. But that is what has made our marriage successful mm -hmm. because we both have the same belief system. Um, we both are striving the same direction. Um, little did she know that I was the way I was feeling about going back to work, which 
She does now. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for so anyway. viewing our <clears throat> personal discussions. Our real-time discussion. <laughs> real time. <laughs> In real yeah, time. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you as always. We're not professionals in any sense no, of the word. We're just a couple that wants to share to other couples on mm -hmm. maybe possibly how to try to do things. You and know? we kind of want to show you the real... Make it, make it work. Man. Real world. Yeah. We so many years thought we were alone in so many of these things. And I think that's the most important thing is to open up and say you're not alone. Right. Um, in these feelings and all of the subjects that we talk about. We right. want you to know you're not alone. And also that even through these little crises, you can have a long, happy marriage. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And with that, <laughs> Jay, Krista, say I do forever. Helping you continue to say I do forever. And Until ever and time. ever. <laughs> See you guys. Bye, guys. And if you, if you want to like the video, <laughs> hit subscribe down in that corner, I believe. Oh, no, and exactly. uh, ring the bell for notifications. <laughs> Bye. Until next time. See you guys.